Hi guys and girls, I'm Obsidian Ant and welcome back to Space Engine. This is a galaxy or a universe rather full of trillions and trillions of planets and many many stars as well. And it can be a little bit problematic as well sometimes to navigate your way around it. There's a lot of fairly flat planets to come across but sometimes there's some very special locations, some of them you've seen in my previous videos. I asked a question previously in one of my other videos whether you'd like to see some type of guide on how to find some of these planets. Many of you said you'd like to see that, so here I am with some tips and hints on exactly how to do that. Now, ideally, you want to find yourself near a galaxy. It could be the Milky Way or any other galaxy. And then over on the side, you've got this little icon there. This is the thing you want. It's the star browser. Very, very important, often overlooked. And in fact, I used Space Engine for a very long time without realizing it was there. So set your surge radius to a thousand light years or a hundred light years, whatever you want. I've found a thousand light years to be pretty good. And then you can choose what type of system you want or what type of object you want. For stars, I usually leave that to any. And for the object to search itself, I set that to both planet and moon. Now you can set how many suns you want within the system. For me, that doesn't matter. You can then choose some of the planet parameters here. So what surface you want, as well as what planet type you want. Again, usually, unless I'm looking for something absolutely specific, I'll leave them to any. But you can leave it for a desert planet, for example. But what I do find to be most valuable, the thing that finds the best planets for me, is to simply put a tick in the atmosphere box there. And that will find me planets that have got atmospheres. Life, again, I'll leave that. doesn't matter. But again, you can be very specific if you want to be. Obviously, the more specific you are, the longer it's going to take Space Engine to search all the planets within the galaxy or your chosen radius to find what you're actually looking for. Because the more specific you are, the less chances there are going to be of you finding exactly what you want. Whilst there are trillions of planets out there, to get very unique parameters can take quite a long time to find. So it really does depend on what you're looking for. So once you've got your results here, simply choose one of them from the list. And I'm going to choose the first one and select the Go To button. This will bring you to the relevant star system. Again, right here, you can't see anything specific. It's still a long way from what you actually want to find in terms of stellar distances. Up at the top of right hand corner of the screen, the top left hand corner of the screen rather, you've got a little bit of information about the star system. Press F2 and it will bring up the system map. Initially, it looked like you haven't really got anything there, but when you click on a sun, you can see the little icon in the bottom right hand corner and that will show you all the planets or the moons orbiting that particular body. So this one here, for example, we can get some more information on here. We can see that this one actually hasn't got an atmosphere, so it's not really what I'm looking for. This one here, on the other hand, does have an atmospheric composition. And it also tells me the class of planet is a scorched desert. This one here is a hot desert, as is this one. And you can see from the little system map here, you get a bit of an idea of what color the planets are going to be when you go there. So choose a planet, press the G key, press it once, and you will travel there very slowly like I'm doing here. Or double tap it and you'll go there a little bit faster. So there's a lot of different purposes you can use Space Engine for. It's a wonderful exploration tool. It lets you see all manner of stellar bodies out there in the universe. So it's pretty much unrivaled in terms of exploration. But if you also want to take screenshots or take some video footage, then it's also exceptionally good at that. Some people even use it to get some desktop backgrounds and other things pretty much unrivaled, like I say. But to do that, you're going to need to find these rather stunning locations. So as you're coming into a planetary orbit here, look for a space that's got some surface features. In this case, we've got a nice gathering of mountains here. Get close enough and you can see that both the mountains and the atmosphere itself. And it's at your discretion here just how low you actually want to get. Sometimes, as you come into orbit up close to the mountains, you'll find that they're a little bit blurry, and that's because the procedural generation hasn't had time to actually generate the terrain yet. So slow down a little bit, or come to a full stop, and this will actually start generating in. Now, when it comes to terrain loading, there's three different modes. You can switch between these using the question mark key. You have immediate, interleaved, and asynchronous. Now, immediate will immediately load all the uh, terrain in as fast as it can, this sometimes seems to have a bit of a frame rate hit, at least for me. You then have interleaved, which will uh, cue the terrain loading and only load it as and when it's actually needed as you get near it. And a synchronous loading will again put it into a queue, but it will put various functions on the different threads on your CPU. So switch between them and see which one is actually better for you. I actually find that the synchronous is better for me. 
Now, one of the things I really do enjoy with Space Engine is time lapses, and it's got a functionality for this built right in. Using the K and L key, you can speed up and slow down time respectively, and using the J key, you can switch between reversing time or fast forwarding time. So here I have a time in reverse, and I'm actually speeding it up. You can then put a little bit of motion onto your camera by using your chosen control method, and you'll get a rather nice little looking time lapse, just like this one here. So, talking of controlled methods, I actually use my HOTUS, which is a Thrustmaster Warthog. I find it gives exceptionally smooth camera movements, which is ideal for video recording, and it's just a wonderful sensation for flying around. Incidentally, I've set the controls to function exactly the same in Space Engine as they do in Elite Dangerous. Now, your mileage may vary as to whether you want to do something like that. The only controls I've customised here are on the uh, camera controls, and you can see I've changed some of the axes. So you may want to do that, and you don't by no means have to use a HOTUS, you can also use an Xbox pad, which I have used previously, and that equally gives some very nice movements, although you don't get 6 degrees of freedom control on that. You can also use keyboard and mouse, although I find they to be very jerky in terms of controlling the camera. But either way, I advise going through the camera controls here and customising them so it feels like you're controlling a ship rather than a camera. And here are my graphic settings. Now, I'm sure these are by no means idyllic, but they do seem to give me the best performance and best visual appearance. Now, Space Engine is pretty demanding. I've got an i7 6700K and a GTX 1080 running all of this. But do experiment with your graphic settings because you'll get dramatically different appearances to the planets depending on what you choose here. Very, very important. So then, I hope that helps you out a bit. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.